to uh, was in my hotel room out in uh, Bali and uh, did a little presentation for you guys from the swimming pool. Uh, now I'm standing in front of the Opera House in Sydney. I was coming to the Gold Coast in Australia for three days of talks and that's already over. It's the day after. I gave a full day uh, on the first day of the conference to the uh, Australian and New Zealand uh, Academy of Indodonis. A great group of people. Had a wonderful time meeting a lot of uh, leaders in the field of uh, endo in Australia and uh, lots of academics like Dr. Paul uh, Abbott. Uh, I got a chance to meet uh, many of the great uh, uh, younger people that are kind of leading the organizations now. Uh, Gus and uh, Morgan and uh, of course Dr. Philip uh, and Alan. Uh, those guys, guys have all been doing a lot of work here in Australia so it's just great to meet so many wonderful Indodonists uh, so far away from the other side of the world and get to know them. The day after, I had two days of talks with the Trans-Tasman group of uh, Indodonic Associations and Indodonic Academy was a great conference as well. Talked about obturation and irrigation, my two pet peeves. And uh, then that's done. And now it's the, 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 the day after I'm here in Sydney and enjoying the scenery around this city, which is also very vibrant and beautiful. And heading back, finally coming to an end of this uh, long one month trip almost around the world here, starting from uh, Boston and coming in, uh, seeing all of this lower part of Asia and then off to the Gold Coast and Sydney and, and tomorrow heading out to Los Angeles and then from there back to Boston, almost circumnavigating the earth here. Anyway, so I figured what I would do also in this little video uh, to share with you one of the cases that I talked about in my uh, presentation over there in the Trans-Tasman and this one is on the idea of obturation. This is about the use of the segmented hydraulic condensation which is a technique I've described as a part of the post technique that I've talked about back in 2008. The idea of pre-fitting the post and then segmenting the gutta percha at the point of the termination of the post and this way getting around the use of a drill. So it's a drillless post technique, if you will. And uh, this helps reduce the chances of perforation during your post placement. But in this particular case, you could actually use it during obturation in cases we have restri restricted access. And uh, if you were to put in a melt to get a to burn it off, you create a lot of mess and it's going to be more difficult to clean. This is in those specific situations that would be very helpful. And also in cases in which you have a type 4 canal anatomy, I've done that in a previous video in which you could segment the get a uh, at the point of the division of the canal. And that would also help in terms of uh, cementing one cone and putting the other one without pushing the melted gutta percha into the other canal. All right, let's just quickly see this case and then uh, come back and talk about it. All right, folks, so I'm here in my hotel room. Let's do a quick little thing of this case that I want to share with you. Uh, and this case is just a, a selective retreatment of this uh, molar that has a uh, has had a previous root canal and has a lesion around the mesial buccal roots, actually the mesial roots. And uh, uh, there is an area that is unfilled underneath the crown. Usually this ha happens where if you have decay or if you have an area that's been left as a space where you can have bacterial regrowth, coronal leakage, and you end up having problems in these types of uh, cases. And therefore, it's best to be retreated considering the fact that there is a large post on the distal, but there's no lesion there. In these kinds of cases, I always prefer to do select of retreatment in a more conservative fashion by only treating the tooth that is the problem and then hopefully that would be enough and if needed down the line I can always go back since there's already a crown and there's no need for a new crown I can go back and retreat the distal root so therefore you're not really forced to do all of the canals and you can do selective retreatment. I know many people kind of don't like an idea of a selective retreatment uh, ideologically. To me, if it's okay to do selective apicoectomy on a given root, then there is no reason why not to do selective retreatment, especially if you can always go back and retreat the rest of the roots if needed, and you don't need to take extra chances for no reason. All right, so in a case like this, I always like, as you know, to use the radiograph to pre-measure the length of the root, and that's what I'm gonna do here. And, you know, I have an estimated length as I go on, and then then what I like to do is I make a limited access opening over the um, mesial roots, almost like a premolar axis through the skull crown so that I can find those two mesial roots and the space that was underneath there. I evaluate it under the scope to make sure there's no decay or any other problems down there. I uh, 
use the ultrasonic to clean that space out remove all the gutta percha that may be there and you can see here that's where the gutta percha is and i proceed then to go ahead and remove the rest of the gutta percha that's in that area and clean it out and dry it and you can see now at higher magnification i have those orifices i use a, um, a higher speed uh, uh, for my orifice opener create a well place chloroform in there and then go up with austenitic files to remove all of the gutta percha in a crown down fashion Go ahead, remove all of the gutta percha, uh, try to disinfect using uh, sodium hypochlorite and other irrigants in that area. And then I managed to kind of get it to a large enough adequate apical preparation to size 40 or 4. There was a little step right at the apex of this uh, tooth in this area. So I kind of back up a little bit and get it to a size 40, but did have patency at a smaller size down there. So I'm using the, I dried the canals up and then I'm just passing my, uh, calcium silica sealer in a um, reverse direction down to the end of the root and now i'm doing this kind of um this segmented hydraulic condensation that i explained to you guys which is kind of like almost like that post technique except that i'm going to do this now at the level of the rfs and the reason for that is with a limited access opening like the one i have here this kind of a technique helps me be able to uh just segment the um got a percha cone and then place it and then condense it down and then twist it off and that way i will not have a mess of gutta percha as i would normally be having if i were to use heat to melt the gutta percha all the way off and so here i'm going to use that i'm using the um the heat tips to just now melt that little half a millimeter to a millimeter portion that's further up and pushing that down and what that does is that it does help um uh, kind of create that nail head that covers all of the uh, gutta percha at that point. And so as a result of that, now what we have is uh, a nice little uh, hydraulically condensed uh, gutta percha cone at the orifice level of both of these two mesial canals and just pushing it without having any backfill and then removing the sealer using uh, water because of this hydrophilic calcium silicate cements and then filling up uh, um, the access opening after that would be with the use of our liner and you can use anything you can see here before the filling with the liner that we have uh, the canals filled and then now i go ahead and do um, place my resin modified glassionomer in the access preparation and this is how it looks and that's the pre-op and the post-op you can see we filled that space up and we have filled up a couple of lateral canals and actually the connection between the two canals and you can see that we have a little bit of a puff and that specific area underneath the crown where there was a space was filled and here's a uh, a post-op after a few months and you can see we have healing showing that we managed to fill this very efficiently these two canals retreat them and fill them and now this patient can go on about their merry way and have their tooth back if this causes a problem down the line with the other root and i find out that the distal root has um, caused the problem i would obviously go back in and retreat that tooth at that point at no charge but i would like to do this limited kind of a basis of treatment on the mesial roots since that was the problem originally and that got solved and the symptoms went away and this reduces the odds of any potential issues with trying to remove that thick post out of that tooth and unnecessarily retreat it all right as you saw this particular case demonstrates the use of the segmented uh, hydraulic condensation which is the idea of cutting the gutta percha a little bit uh, at the point of termination whether it's the termination of the post or whether you have you want to cut it at about the one millimeter above the orifice or a half a millimeter above the orifice or at the point of the orifice and, and then uh, uh, have to to not use a lot of heat in terms of melting off the gut approach and breaking off this, uh, the, the handle. It's just going to simplify that whole process. I hope this was helpful to you and uh, keep in mind that these are all the different permutations of the use of hydraulic condensation that I've already described in that video that I shot in Budapest. Uh, if you want to look at the other permutations of the uh, hydraulic condensation, it's all in there. As I was joking around with the group uh, in the audience uh, out in uh, Australia, out in, with the Trans Tasman group, I, I, I told them that look most of my publications uh, scientific publications are on youtube i'm too lazy to write articles and publish them so these are all considered publications there just because they're dated and they're going to be there permanently so you can certainly uh, use these as original articles for describing all these techniques which weren't around uh, and this is the actual original source here on youtube this is hey it's the modern world nowadays you know we're all learning visually and uh, trying to to do it this way as opposed to read the abstract scientific uh, uh, articles. So that's it. Hope this was helpful to you. I'll be heading back to Boston and I'll see you in the next video. Until next video, let's save some tea.